Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, I'm here with the latest, as always, from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. And today I have an Intel themed video for you, as we have a bunch of stuff happening with that particular company. So, let's start off with the ninth generation, shall we? So what we have here is an accidental reveal of the prices, whoopsie, as essentially we had an early reveal of the retail prices by the website Silicon Lottery. Now, of course, the listing for the Coffee Lake R processors were swiftly removed, but not before WCCF Tech were able to get their be little eyes on them and, of course, provide us all with some wonderful screenshots. So thank you very much to them. So... What do we have in terms of prices? Well, we have the 9900K, which of course is the flagship processor, being listed for a price price, excuse me, of $480, which is about 100 bucks more than the 8700K, and the 9700K is listed for 370, which actually pegs it around the exact same price as the 8700K. So, yeah, as I say, these listings, or this listing, should I say, has now been removed, but of course it's not all that long until we find out for sure where we are expecting the official reveal by Intel to be made on the 9th of October. And of course, we'll most likely get the confirmation of all the specs, prices, release date, and so on and so forth that we have seen leaked over the last few months. We have, of course, had various leaked benchmarks, performance metrics, and so on over the last few months and even weeks. So it's going to be interesting, rather, to see exactly how much of it actually ends up being accurate. Hopefully we do get a decent look at the performance, or preview of the performance at least, at the official reveal, but of course we're going to have to wait and see. But let's move swiftly on to our next topic, which as I said is, is an Intel themed video for you today, so this is actually regarding the supply issues. So we actually have a couple of things here, funnily enough, have an open letter from the Intel CEO, but we also have a comment from the president of Compul, a Taiwan-based notebook manufacturer, by the name of Martin Wong, and he had his say with, in a recent interview as to the supply issues that are currently plaguing Intel's 14NM process. And he said that he fully expects that the supply issues with Intel processors could actually continue until the second half of 2019. So not exactly just round the corner. Now, obviously this very much concerns him as it could undermine notebook shipments. And they've obviously kind of upgraded their expectations as to their shipments and all that sort of thing as a result. And unfortunately, Martin did say that Intel hasn't given any partners a clear schedule on when these shortages are going to be resolved. So obviously they're kind of going, mm, Intel, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit concerned. Can I at all have some reassurance? And Intel's are like, sorry, bro, I can't really help you on that. But actually we do have a statement, as already said, from the interim CEO, Bob Swan of Intel, and he has published an open letter regarding the 14 NM, NM manufacturing issues. Now, the long story short with his open letter is basically kind of reiterating their plans to boost production of 14NM, which I've already discussed in the past. However, Bob says here that they are spending an extra $1 billion to boost 14NM manufacturing across various sites. And, of course, this is in response to not only the issues they are having with 14NM, but also the delays that have been hitting 10NM, which, of course, have put unexpected strain on the 14NM process. Unfortunately, he doesn't really go into any real detail as to what they are going to do, just kind of reassures people, yes, we are increasing production, we are, you know, funding our 14NM facilities, and just reassures everyone that they are going to be hitting volume production of 10NM sometime in 2019, which, of course, fairly lines up with what I just said regarding the CEO of Compul's uh, comments. And I do have a direct quote from Bob here. It says, quote, we continue to believe we'll have at least a supply to meet full year revenue outlook we announced in July, which was $4.5 billion higher than our January expectations. We're making progress with 10NM. Yields are improving and we continue to expect volume production in 2019. So obviously Intel's 14NM process is very, very popular. It is what makes up you know, Coffee Lake and a bunch of other stuff that they have going on that of course is very popular for obvious reasons. But as I've stated many, many times and even just now in this video, the main reason we are seeing so much more strain than we otherwise would being put on this particular process is of course the fact that 10NM has been delayed more times than I can count at this point. We, we should have already seen it and obviously it's now not going to be out until some nebulous time in 2019, which is not really helping things all that much in honesty. 
Now, obviously, Intel are taking the right steps here. They are increasing production, and obviously, they've moved older processors like the H310 onto 22nm to, you know, basically use what 14nm chips they have for their higher end SKUs and all that sort of stuff. But obviously, they are still having major issues. Yes, the popularity of 14nm is part of it, but again, the impact of the 10nm delays cannot be understated, I think. And to finish things up here, we have further comments from another analyst regarding 10NM. So what we have here is another interview with a another analyst by the name of Chris Queso, who spoke... So what we have here is another analyst by the name of Chris Queso, who is an analyst for Raymond James, and he had a recent interview with CNBC. And of course, the topic, as you might guess, was the delay of the 10NM process. And he essentially said that the development issues that Intel are having could set them back at least five years behind TSMC. So, as I just said, Intel are very much expecting to have the first 10nm processors out by 2019. So this is obviously a significant delay upon what we already had. And I do have a quote here from Chris who says, quote, In Intel's biggest strategic problem is a delay on 10nm production. We don't expect a 10nm server chip from Intel for two years. 10nm delays create a window for competitors and the window may never again close. Now, I just want to bring to your attention something that has probably already occurred to you, but it is definitely worth sort of dragging out into the sun, as it were. TSMC are in the final stages of rolling out the 7NM process. So they're already behind by not even having 10NM out there. But by the time they actually get it out there, TSMC and of course Samsung could probably be getting ready to put out 5NM or even 3NM processes. Now this does actually line up with some comments we've had in the past from analysts that you know Intel are falling further and further behind its competitors. Obviously, we've already seen reports that Intel are offloading some of its 14NM uh, manufacturing, shall I say, to TSMC. And of course, AMD are allegedly, reportedly going to be relying on TSMC to produce further generations of Zen processors. So obviously, we've got to take AMD into consideration here as well. You know, we are fully expecting to see... Zen 2 is going to have 7NM, and obviously we're going to be going beyond that, and obviously they're working on 7NM for Navi, and blah de blah de blah so it's obviously not just TSMC that Intel have to worry about, you know, AMD I'm sure are loving this at the moment, like, yep, okay, you, you, you struggled to get 10NM out there, we're going to just skip straight to 7NM and just be laughing, basically. Now, obviously, as I just said, AMD are going to be relying on TSMC or allegedly relying on TSMC for the production of Zen processors. Obviously, they are benefiting from that as well. So, yeah, the fact that AMD are going to be making the best of this is obviously not good. And obviously, TSMC are loving life at the moment because not only are they ahead, you know, you've got AMD relying on them. And then obviously, Intel is just uh, like, help, help, I can't get 10M out, 10NM out of the pool, help. So, yeah. That's obviously some comments from an analyst as to what they expect the impact is going to be, you know, at least five years behind TSMC. What the impact is actually going to be, of course, we're going to only have to wait and see. It's just pure speculation that we're going to be seeing, you know, Intel, or, sorry, TSMC or Samsung or AMD or whoever, you know, tearing ahead by the time Intel gets 10NM out there. But, you know, they're all, TSMC themselves, at least, are already ahead. So it's not outside the realms of possibility, to be quite frank with you. So all in... All in all for this video is Intel just not having a good time right now. They are, they're not having a good time. Obviously, they're, they're still doing well. They're still Intel. They've still got, you know, several Scrooge McDuck sized swimming pools full of cash, obviously. I'm not saying they're begging on the street corner for change anytime soon, but it's still not brilliant. You know, even a company as, as big and successful as Intel obviously can't keep letting their competitors just tear ahead of them while they struggle with their own issues. Obviously, their competitors have their own issues, obviously, but yeah so that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching as always your support is highly appreciated do remember to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already it does help out a great deal and i'll see you next time